Hey guys, we are here with oh, Moses. Oh, you're doing live? No, not live. Oh. Pastor Thomas. <laughs> Pastor Al. I know. We can Pastor yeah, Lydia. And Pastor Rick out of Reno. Hi guys. Right, there we go. Everybody's here. Yeah. We're having fun. Yes. So we're having. Uh, next year, you guys have to come. Yeah. Next year. See, Pastor Thomas is inviting you guys to come. Yes, and he's speaking it. So what? what remember, what comes out of the mouth is it's what's going to manifest. So y'all better get ready. Not only does he want you to come to conference, but they want you to come to Nigeria and Uganda. And Uganda. <laughs> if they, if somebody visits. You, your life will be true. Yeah. They will come and do. They will be serious be a blessing. transformation. Amen. Yes. You will never come back the way you come. <laughs> Amen. I guarantee you that. And they won't go hungry if they go, right? No. <laughs> There's a houses to stay in. Yeah? So as long as they pay their flight. Mm -hmm. The place is safe. Everything will be okay. You will be amazed. Amen. How long does it take? <laughs> All right, guys. We're just out here fellowshipping. The second service just ended. Hi. I and, miss uh, you guys. Oh, you're blurry. Oh, I'm blurry. <laughs> so we're just getting to fellowship a little bit, then we're going to get back to the room and do the devotion. So uh, but I just wanted to uh, let you see the guys. Uh, tomorrow we'll do a video with um, Pastor Moses tomorrow. Yeah. So Pastor Moses can say hi to people on YouTube. So we'll do a live tomorrow, guys. So be ready for that live, okay? We love you guys, and we'll see you guys in a little bit. Bye, right. you. Bye, See you tomorrow. All right. Bye, bye. Having fun here. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was a cool little video of yeah. our little fellowship after church or after, yeah, after the second session of the conference. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool because the first few years they didn't do that until last year, huh? Yeah. Before people would be dismissed and then everybody would just kind of disperse and go their own way. And now they set up this table with like, like finger foods. Is that what you call them? Yeah. Yeah, little finger foods and stuff, and it allows people to fellowship and 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 get to meet people and whatnot. And uh, finally, got to sit down with with Pastor Dario, who I've been wanting to talk to him for a long time. He is um, out of Guatemala. Is that what he said? Yeah, he's uh, established in Guatemala, but he actually oversees. Uh, Central America. All of Central America. So Mexico, yeah. Honduras, El Salvador, everywhere, right? Guatemala, yeah. Yeah, so it's really cool because you guys know Sharon is, is uh, Honduran, so she had a good conversation with him because he mm -hmm. actually plant, has 10 churches planted there? Is yeah, that... he has 10 planted there. Wow. And 10 just in Tegucigalpa, which is where uh, pretty much all of my mom's family is at, is in Tegucigalpa. Um, That's crazy. So we ever visited, we could visit Grace Churches there. Mm -hmm. You didn't know that. Yeah. No, I didn't. So that, that, that was really exciting to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. And he goes, I'm going to be there next week. I know. Did you get jealous? We're like, what? I was like, well, yeah, that's really, really cool. So yeah. that was exciting to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been, like I said, I've been trying to get him to come to the house to rest for a while. He's, he's busy. I mean, he's all over the place, you know, so. But so, then. Huh? Oh, no. What were you going to say about that? No, I'm sorry. I'm yawning. So, oh. It's kind of late night. Yeah. So then, I mean, every night at the convention is a late night. Yeah. But then, you know, Pastor Rick from Reno, he's a Grace Church out of Reno. He came and hung out with us, and obviously Al and Lydia were hanging around with us. And then Pastor Moses walks up Yeah. first. And then uh, Pastor Thomas comes. Yeah, and then we just were all just chit chatting away yeah. and everything. So they asked how you guys were all doing. Um, so I, that's when I hit the camera and just decided to record and put them on. So. Yeah. And then we had Pastor Scott come from, he's from the NorCal district. He's the uh, district superintendent. Yeah, from the whole NorCal district. And then. You know, his his NorCal group came and we just all just hung out and that was really fun. Chit chatted for a little while and everything. So it's it's always nice to to be able to hang out and and I'm excited about tomorrow because we have a, a women's um, women on the patio, which is where uh, 
the whole women from the conference come together mm -hmm. and we go on to the patio and we have service on the patio so that's for tomorrow and i know while we're there a lot of you men are going to kind of get together and go have lunch or something yeah, from, the the pastors, NorCal, from the, the norcal from the norcal pastors. district yeah which is really nice um and then tomorrow is our second time ever that the uh choir oh, so yeah I'm in the choir for the conference, which is really nice. So I need to get a good seat. Yeah, you do. So the choir, it's the second year in a row that they've been having the choir uh, sing. And I did join the choir. It was a little bit smaller than last year. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed, but it's Did you less... remember you? Yeah. So it's, you know, it's... Uh, we're, I'm going to be in the choir, and I'm really, really excited because you guys know I love to to do choir. So I, I'm I'm kind of excited. We only got to practice once. Today was our first and only practice, which was for 45 minutes. Oh, that's to it? An hour, yeah, it was like an hour, 45 minutes almost. Wow. Um, so it's it's really intense. Um, seems harder. Man, that seems really hard. It, it is hard, but, um, you know... When you only get 45 minutes to an hour to practice for like six whole songs, six sets, you know, for a whole choir, it's, it's, it's really intense, but yeah. we're really, really excited, but I'm kind of just excited to share the word that you have for today. So let's get right into it. So that way, you know, we can, um, that way we can get our rest because I know we have a long day tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. But we miss you guys. We mean? really do. We talk to them every day. I know, but we didn't have Bible study. Oh, you're talking to... Oh, okay. As of yesterday, you know. I know we normally get to see them for Bible study, but yeah. since there wasn't Bible study, it was kind of more of a shorter day, you know, than usual. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, at, at the House of Rest Church, uh, Pastor Angel had Bible study today, but they didn't go online because the phones are here with us, you know? Yeah. And Angel... Um, Obviously, he has a phone, but he's not logged into our YouTube, so that's why they he wasn't able to um, to log in because of that. You know, because the phones are with us. Um, I hadn't found the verse here before. I should have. Uh, where's it at? It's right here. What I wanted to talk about, but I guess while I'm talking about it. Where is it at? So are you going to Genesis 24? Yeah, but I'm looking for a... No. Okay, there it is. Genesis 22. This is a... It might sound like a strange story to those of you that don't know this scripture, but basically, a little backdrop is Abraham is very important in the Bible. Very important in Christianity. Very important in Judaism. Uh, Abraham is called, many times he's called the father of faith, that this whole thing started when God called Abraham. Mm -hmm. His actual name was Abram at first, uh, and then later on, God called him Abraham. Big difference, because Abraham means the father of many. But the funny thing was that God called him that when Abraham was an old man and had no children and his wife was old. And God says, I'm going to call you Abraham. Which is crazy because God is basically calling him something that he's not a father of many. So guys, a lot of times God's going to call you something and it doesn't even fit. Doesn't your, make sense. Doesn't fit your circumstances. Yeah. And then you're looking at yourself like... Why would God call me that? Why would he call you a mighty woman of God? Why would he call you a mighty man of God? And you're like anything but mighty. Mm -hmm. It's because God is speaking into your future. He's speaking into your possibilities. He's speaking into your, 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 I don't know, what's the word? Well, you know, you know, it's sometimes he, he's speaking and he's speaking it into existence or into our life. And, and he's speaking something that he sees us that we don't even see ourselves to be. Exactly. Yeah. He speaks to your potential. Oh, yeah. To, put to your potential. You know, he's not just saying that just because it's like, it's, it's different from us, right? 
And don't get me wrong, I get it. Somebody's, somebody's kid is going to be the president, you know. But, you know, a lot of times we tell our kids they're going to do something. And honestly, it's highly unlikely. But I'm not who, saying it's impossible. When God speaks something, it's, it's going to happen. But who better than to speak it than the creator yeah. himself? Because he's the one that created us. And mm -hmm. he, obviously, he knows what he created us to be. The thing is, is that we just yet don't know what we are but he does but he does because he created us yeah only the creator knows what we're supposed to be yeah you They'll... know it's like the inventor when somebody invents something yeah they they're the ones that put it together mm -hmm. they're the ones that created the layout they they they're the ones that made the you know they made the that they in, they did the invention they they did the whole mm -hmm. The whole plan they put it together you know when somebody does a a whole um what, what what would you say the blueprint yeah you know they put the blueprint together and they do all that they draw it out and everything so it's because they visioned it you know and so when they envision something it's 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 the thought process that they put it together so they're gonna have yeah. that whole envision of it well we have this big canvas in our living room and we know exactly what it's going to be. Well, not we. Well, I guess I envision it more than you because... Well, you have the photo. I can well, envision it. Yeah, but then... I know exactly it is what I'm going to paint. Not it. really because I th have things that I want to add on to it. And I've told you what I want to add on to it. So. Okay, you just took away my point. So let's try with something else. My point was going to be that the canvas doesn't know what it's going to be. But we do. I'm the painter, so I know what it's going to be. But we could use a different example. <laughs> you just took the wind out of me. <laughs> I didn't mean to. But but I'm actually the one that, that has it really truly envisioned in my brain, though. Because I asked you if you can paint it. Mm -hmm. And until I give you the blueprint or until I give you the, the that and the idea, then I'm going to give it to you. And then you're going to go ahead and create it. Yeah, no, but that was a detail that didn't help my point. But you guys get the point, right? The canvas doesn't know. My point <laughs> is the canvas is a blank canvas. Oh, I'm sorry. The I... blank, the canvas is a blank canvas. It doesn't know what it's gonna be, you know. So in the same way, we can be a blank canvas or even a messed up canvas, you know. And but the painter knows what it's gonna be, but the canvas doesn't. God is the painter. God is the artist. God is the creator. See, God you is still all made things. your point. Yeah. So it's like, well, how did it, how did we tie this in Abraham though? Oh, because God called them Abraham. Yes. So, anyways, in the story, he's an old man. His wife is old. Mm -hmm. But God says, from now on, you'll be Abraham, the father of many, even though he didn't have a kid. And as the story goes, which there's other details, but it, no need to go into them because it doesn't pertain to this story. He finally had Isaac. Mm -hmm. He finally got a son. In their old age, they had Isaac. And and they loved Isaac. I mean, Sarah loved Isaac. Abraham loved Isaac. That was like their the apple of their eye. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know? and, um, and all of a sudden, it's, it's interesting because... Um, Where's it at? No, I'm looking for it here. I kind of know where it's at, but anyways, in Genesis 22, I'm just going to kind of read it. It says in verse 22, verse 1, chapter 22, verse 1, sorry. It says this. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. And he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So God blesses him with his son, calls him the father of many nations, finally gives him a son. And now God says, I want you to take Isaac and go sacrifice him for me. That's crazy. I want you to burn up your son for me on an altar. 
And this is crazy because the next verse it says, So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son. He split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. So they traveled a long ways, huh? Yeah. They traveled a long ways, three days worth of walking, and he finally sees the place. And Abraham says to the two young men, he will stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and we're going to worship and we'll come back to you. Notice something though. He says, and we will come back to you. Did you ever catch that? Mm -mm. He, God told him, I want you to go sacrifice your son. But then he tells the two servants, wait here. We're going to go worship and we will come back. There was faith in that. He's like, I, I don't know why he's telling me to sacrifice my son, but I do. And it, and it wasn't, he wasn't saying it, that he's going to come back with the donkey because obviously the donkey yeah. stayed there because. It was just him and Isaac. It said, stay here with the donkey. Yeah. And we will come back. And that's crazy. So let, let's read on a little more. So, so Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering. And he laid it on on Isaac, his son. So, he, man, he, he's about to sacrifice his son and makes his son carry the wood. Anybody else, you know, had wood on their back about to be sacrificed? Anybody you know? So, instead of... Who carried the wood up, up the mountain? The to sacrifice, sacrifice himself? Jesus? You see the, do you see that the correlation? Yeah. The Mount Calvary where Jesus traveled. Carried the he cross. He carried the cross on his back. On his back. The very thing that he was going to be sacrificed on, he carried it up in the same way. So you got to understand, guys, when you read the Old Testament, man, there's so many little glimpses of Jesus. Yeah. So... He took the wood of the burnt offering, laid it on Isaac, his son... And took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father, he said. And he says, Here I am, my son. And he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where's the lamb for a burnt offering? So his son started realizing, Wait a second. We got the wood, you got the fire, you got the knife. Where's the sacrifice? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. So that's what he answers. He goes, God's going to provide. And then they went to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son. So he ties up his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And right when Abraham was about to drive that knife into the son that he loved so much, the son that was his promise, that was his promise, that was his legacy. Mm -hmm. He's about to slay his son, but the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he says, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the place, the name of the place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. So, you know, there's so many things, ways we can talk about this thing. I'm not sure. Because it's been a while since I read that. Yeah. So a lot of things are kind of popping in my head, you know. But I know I, I mentioned earlier that a lot of us have been given things. We've been promised things. We have talents. We have our families. We have 
things we love, things we care about. And well, I always say I didn't, I didn't, I didn't accept Christ. I surrendered to Him. And basically, it's like you're saying, Lord, I'm laying it all in the altar. And even the things you love the most, because this doesn't Jesus say, "He who loses his life for my sake will gain it." Yeah, shall find it. So in a sense, because you're like, man, Lord, you know, I want to live life. I want to enjoy life. And he's like, no, you got to give your life to me. You got to sacrifice it to me. And right when you're about to lay it, you know, it's like he wants to know if you're willing to give everything up for him. And once he realizes you do, it's like he gives it back. He gives it right back to you. And, and I think that's a great revelation in itself. It's and almost like it's just the act of him wanting to know if you're willing to give it up. How bad do you want him? Yeah. How bad do you want it? You know, and it's like everybody wants to serve Jesus. But because he doesn't need anything from you. No. He doesn't need anything from us. Everybody wants Jesus to be their savior, but nobody wants Jesus to be their Lord. Yeah. What does that mean, guys? You know what a Lord is? It's master. Oh, we want to, everybody wants to accept Jesus. But are you willing to sacrifice and have him be your Lord? That means he tells you which way to go. He tells you where to walk. He tells you where to stop. He tells you when to go right. He tells you when to go left. He tells you, I don't want you to do that anymore. He tells you how, how, when, what, where, who. He tells you everything. Because he's the Lord. He's mm -hmm. the master. You can't call him your Lord and Savior if you're not following him, see, here's the thing in America, most of the people will say, yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Um, so do you follow him? Yeah. On what standards? Yeah. Do you follow him? Yeah. Because Jesus will take nothing less than complete submission. Yeah. Under what conditions? Is there any conditions? What standards? You know, under your rules? under any rules they don't work that way yeah you know is is it just seems like there are a lot of the times there's a lot of justifications mm -hmm. do we justify do we compromise you know and i think that's that's the problem i think nowadays a lot of the times we find ourselves compromising we we find ourselves justifying a lot of things we want to fit the the word of god to to fit what's best for us um and and that's what we can't be doing we can't just look up something and be like oh well this part here fits me perfect or let me just read the things that are going to be what best contributes to my life and let me not read what doesn't we got to read um the in-betweens the beginning the ends we got to read everything you know, we just can't pick and choose. We can't. We can't compromise. Yeah. You know. No matter what the cost is. There's a lot of people, or maybe some some people watching this. I'll be straight up with you. Is there something you really, really, really love, and have you really given that to the feet of Jesus? Yeah. And be honest with yourself. Or do you not give it to him, and then you justify and find verses to make it seem as if you're okay? Be real with yourself, because you're watching this video by yourself, so you don't got to answer nobody. That's between you and God. That's right. But you got to be just real about it, you know. Uh, me, for myself, you know, you guys know I was in the music industry before, and, and I did all that stuff. And people used to ask me when I was like, up, are you going to go out and do Christian rap? Are you going to do Christian rap? I used to say, no. I used to say, no, no, I'm not going to do it. I ain't going to do it, you know. And um, in those first few years... I gave that to the Lord. I'm like, Lord, I have this talent that some people find that's good. Some people find that I do this good, but I'm laying it at your feet, Lord. And you can have it forever or not. It's up to you, but I give it to you. You know, and and then I, I was out and then maybe after a couple years, you know, I felt him release me to do a song or two. I did a, I did, I did two songs. And that was it. And then I used it as a tool to reach people because I was given a lot of testimony at that time. But it's like, it's weird because once the moment I said, God, I don't want this, is when the Lord said, 
That's exactly what I was waiting for. Now, here, have it back and use it for my glory. You know, and a lot of people have talents, but I want to say this. Is that a surrender talent or is that a talent you refuse to surrender? Because yeah. there's a big difference. If you have a talent that you, ref and I ain't talking about just rap. I'm talking about whether it's teaching or preaching or whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. If that gift or talent or, or whatever it is has not been surrendered to the Lord and it's unsurrendered to him, then that is going to do nothing for you. It'll give you your reward here on earth. Yeah. Heck, maybe you'll get a Grammy. But it doesn't matter. It's until it's tied into his kingdom and he gives it back to you. You know, and it's like, I, I don't want anything unless it's from God. Yeah, amen. You know, and, you know, our marriage, our family, our finances, the things that we have. You I, know. Think, I think a lot of things also when we when we decide to hold on to things as well, they can always uh, hinder us from from when they're not surrendered to him. Yeah, when yeah. they're not surrendered, they can hinder us as well. You know, um, I think it's I think it's so important that we got to be careful with the things that we hold on to as well, because when we hold on to certain things, what we're doing is we're holding back from allowing God to bless us yeah. in so many ways as well. Um, so we, we gotta, we gotta also be careful with that too. You know, sometimes it's better to, um, let go of certain things yeah. because God is, is, God is saying, let go of that so that I can give you more, mm -hmm. um, so that I can give you something better. And sometimes we're not going to know that until we, we let go of it, yeah. you know. And I do want to share this, you know. Um, there was, when I, when I went through my, when I went through my, my brain surgeries and everything, um, I had been offered uh, housing assistance. And, and I remember that there was a social worker that came to my room, you know, because I was working full time. I had my, my kids were older and everything, you know, and I, you know, they came to my room and I had to stop working. Um, and they came and offered me housing assistance and, you know, it's hard to get on that housing assistance from what I had found out. Cause I, I didn't know anything about housing assistance and, um, people had told me that people can, I would have to wait like up to 15 years for that, but they offered it to me immediately and I received it like an emergency it was thing. an emergency um, housing assistance they gave me a voucher immediately um, because of the situation that I was in so I received it you know and I was blessed you know for for that little t bit of time that you know I I had received it and everything but the thing that I noticed when I was on this housing assistance that it was it was sort of like a hindrance it was hindering me from being able to find a place that was going to allow me to be um in a, in in just in a place where i can feel safe you know when i moved here to stockton um i couldn't find a a place that that was kind of safe feeling for me mm -hmm. Everywhere that I would go look, they would tell me, oh, well, you can only look up, look for a place that was within a certain budget. And I would always look and I'd look and I'd look and I couldn't. And they would, you know, they wouldn't offer me anything better. And I was like, this is really, really hard. So it almost felt like I would always cap out at a certain, at a certain level and, you know, and I got to a point where, you know, I just said, I don't, I don't want to live this way. And I had to take that step of faith and said, and I said, Lord, and I had prayed and I remember, you know, saying, Lord, I'm ready to take that step of faith and I need to let go of this 
but you need to open up the doors. And this is, you know, when you and I got married yeah. and you ended up finding a home after and you know where we're and, at now. yeah where we're at now and and i remember i let go of that and i i said you know i was ready to let go of that and immediately we ended up finding a place to live and that's the thing is that sometimes you got to be willing to let go of certain things so that god can bless us and and I'm, i was grateful for the time that they were able to help me with with that housing yeah. assistance for you know for those you know two years or so because i really really needed it you know for the time that i couldn't work after the brain surgeries but you know it helped me for that time being but sometimes you know people people needed it and for me i just kind of felt like I, I'm going to let that go because somebody else can use that. Somebody else can be blessed yeah. by that, you know? And it was time for us to not be hindered by it. And it was time for me to get up and and be able to allow the blessing to come. So I stepped out of faith. You know, it was important yeah. to me. So sometimes we can't hold back on the blessings that God wants to give us as well. You know, have you ever been in a situation where you owe somebody money? Yeah. And there's times where you, or you pay them, and them knowing your situation, they'll turn around and they'll be like, here, man, you can have it. And it's the same way with God. A lot of times we give him something, something we worked hard for. You know, because there's, there's, there's people that, that sing, rap, preach, they worked hard for that to learn how to do it and then to give it to God and all of a sudden he says now that you've given it to me now I release it for you yeah. and I give it back to you I've always said this and and I've always said this to myself uh, and probably to you I'm like you can tell the difference when you hear a worship singer that has held it to the, for themselves and the other one that has surrendered it to God there's a difference. There's a difference when a preacher is hoarding his talent than the one that has released it to God and God gives it back to them. There's a difference, man. Well, when something is surrendered to God and he gives it back to you, there's a difference. See, and there's a difference in everything. Like there's mm -hmm. a difference in a person who needs the help and a person who doesn't. You get what I'm saying? That has taken advantage of things, you know? What do you mean? Just in, in, in everything, like mm -hmm. the situations, you know, when, when a person needs um, the government help or the person doesn't, you get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, there's a difference. There's a difference when a person truly needs, um, the person has like what you're saying and a person doesn't, you know, there's, there's just a difference in everything, yeah. you know, like I, I needed it at the time, but then it was the time that now it was, it was time for me to let it go for so, so that someone else can have mm -hmm. that. And God was saying, okay, it's time for you to step out of the boat now. Yeah. It was like, almost like, you know, come out of the boat, Peter, yeah. you know, step out into the water and don't fear. So, I think it was that time. And so, sometimes we need to step out in faith and things. So in the same way that Abraham loved Isaac, he loved him. The Bible says that he loved him. How much more do you think he loved him once God gave him back to him? Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. Is You might have something you love. Abraham, Abraham loved his son Isaac. Yeah. But he still laid it on the, on the altar to be sacrificed unto God. But then, can you imagine when God gave that son back to him? What did that feel like when he walked back down that hill with his son? You know? And it's the same thing. You can't be afraid to give God the things that God is asking of you. He's asking you to give something up, maybe. And you're just being stubborn. Because you like it, and you like it, you like it. But doesn't the God not know you with the things that you need better than you yourself? Don't hoard the things that belong to God because either he's going to give that back to you or give something better. But he can't release that something better until you give that up first. Yeah. Amen. So, you know, Sharon gave up that, that help. 
you know, and it was good for what the time it was good for. Thankful for the home that we have. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm sure there's a million better homes, but that's our home. It's our little home. You know? And it's comfortable and it has We don't a, own it, but I mean, it's still... And it has a wall of crosses. <laughs> <laughs> but it's our little home, you know, and, and, you know, I know we work hard for it, you know, even though we do our, our little t-shirts and we do this and we do that and we're constantly, you know, doing all kinds of different things to, to make it work, whether it be insurance, whether it me be doing my little side gigs and whatever it be, but we work hard for it. And I praise God for that. Yeah. I praise God for that, babe. You're constantly painting and doing what you do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but, you know, I praise God for that, man. I really do. And and I will continue. I think we will both continue to, to work hard for that, you know. and Yeah. You know so all right guys yeah. it's uh, about that time I gotta still uh, render the video and put it out last night the reason it didn't release at 3 in the morning is I fell asleep when I was rendering and he only had like 12 minutes left he said I couldn't do it he said he had 12 minutes it was like what two o'clock in the morning almost I couldn't do it I fell asleep I woke up at 5 and I realized I hadn't uploaded it yet. So then I started and to upload. It said 30 minutes. Forget that. I went to sleep. <laughs> and then I woke up at 7. And that's when I released it. So uh, let's not have that happen. So I can end this video now. So it doesn't happen again. So uh, Yeah, because it is kind of late, you guys. But... Yeah, very tedious, guys. Yeah, and... we get, by the time we get, we get home. I was like, this is not home. But anyways, I missed my wall. But by the time we get into this room, it's the, the thing doesn't finish till like 9.30, 9.45. By the time that whole fellowship and everything was done, it's already almost 11. We don't get back over here till like 11.30. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's late. All right, Bye. Guys. Bye.